I guess it's ecological insofar as it is panpsychist. I mean, if I, as you know, uh, so basically it means that there is a continuity. The, the, the concept will is better, I suppose, than others. Continuity between all forms of experiences. So. If you meditate, for instance, or if you're struck by intuition, you can uh, envision that continuity between uh, mineral forms of existence, vegetal, animal, and then our own experience. That continuity of life, that flux that goes through all these existences is... I think you can, you can feel it. You can feel it. But of course, as soon as you try to uh, grasp it, you're confronted with a contrast. On the one hand, you have to appeal to experience, which means some form of meditation, which means some form of transformation of your relationship with your own body and the, the surrounding environment. And on the other hand, you have a rational uh, requirement. You have to provide the best possible concept, the best possible, the most likely story, as Whitehead says, uh, quoting uh, Plato. And here it seems to me that his epochal theory of time is really important because it provides both the possibility of understanding that continuity and understanding the, the creativity of the world and what distinguishes more some experience than others, which means that some experiences are obviously more creative than others. Whitehead seems to uh, foster the idea that some experiences being more intense than others seems to have uh, more value. It's a very tricky question because if you understand the whole, if you understand our existence as being the product of uh, what, he, what he calls the unison of becoming, for instance. So it's the, it's the life force that goes through everything, including ourselves. It means that we are really part of it. And if these surroundings are corrupted, are dying, so are we. It's very simple. Uh, and here again, the, the power of Whitehead or the interest of Whitehead will be, I suppose, his scientific and mathematical background. Because if you look at European culture, uh, scholars or fellows who have that sort of, of uh, discussion, they are likely to have some romanticism, you see, some uh, very nice human way of talking about empathy. I mean, well, religious people are like that as well, but you do not speak to a scientist like that. They, they are likely to recoil and to consider that you haven't grasped the, the power of their, of their knowledge and uh, the way it can transform the world. So it really makes sense to try to, to put humans at the core of our world and to acknowledge both that we are part of the, of the exact same life force, but that we have that slight difference that has allowed us, unfortunately, to corrupt our environment. And uh, I think we all know it. I think that common sense tells us that we have to take care of ourselves, of our fellow humans, of everything. And if, if we don't, uh, it will be, it will have very bad results. And common sense is, is, is very an important um, concept or an important feeling. It means that you have to care, it means that you have to respect yourself, of course. And respecting yourself also means to have responsibility for your own life and its consequences. You're here because you've been fathered and mothered. So the traditional way of looking at things is to respect the elderly and take care of the younger. Uh, as you might know or remember, maybe uh, still a century ago, if somebody was cutting a tree for whatever purpose, to, to uh, provide heating or whatever, that person would know it's my great-grandfather who planted the tree and, and, and he has planted the tree knowing that somebody he did not know would be coming. If I'm cutting the tree, I have the duty to do something for those who will come. Uh, and it's complete madness to, to forget that wisdom. And it also means, of course, that would be sort of diachronical um, 
solidarity, but it also means that from the perspective of our current experience, you cannot deny that there is so much suffering in the world and that we need to share whatever resources we have, which means in the West, degrowth and in other countries, I'm not sure you should suggest growth to them. Maybe you should simply leave them enjoying their own culture and building their own future. It's, it's quite tricky as, as soon as you consider that you have seen the truth. Huh? You can preach for yourself, you can try to convince people, perhaps that through your own ethos, as the Greek will say, through your own life, perhaps that some people will be persuaded. So which is different than conviction. Huh? I can convince you that you should stop smoking, because I don't know if you smoke or not, that you should stop smoking but it's, because it's bad for you, etc. And you know it, but and you see the, the rationality of the argument, but maybe you won't take care, take it into account. Uh, so it is through persuasion, which is a concept that is relevant, of course, of, in, in Whitehead, uh, that you can perhaps change things uh, while being fully aware of the necessity of, of uh, being open to other culture uh, welcoming other culture and not thinking for a second that you have reached uh, some form of enlightenment, scientific enlightenment that will um, that should be shared. Uh, Europeans in 200 years have ruined the world. It's very simple. Uh, the industrial age, 200 years, it's gone. Everything is collapsing. The, a lesson should should be, that lesson should be heard.